Bill's boy, Jeffrey, is an athetoid spastic. Although he's intelligent, he cannot speak, nor make his needs known by gestures. Jeffrey is imprisoned by his body, and such are the nature of his handicaps that he spends his life in the sunroom. Here, the babies spend their day, some at tables, some on beanbags, and some in wheelchairs. Green has spent his 50 years totally dependent upon other people. After 40 years in bed, he progressed to a beanbag, and there he stayed for another 10 years. Since Jean Williams has been on the ward, Terry has graduated to a wheelchair. Yet despite this progress, it was still accepted that Terry was, for want of a politer word, a vegetable. I accepted it when I first went in there. And he was one of the poor patients that was for the veranda. Then this particular day we were watching him and he bent down and was trying to turn the little tiny wheel on his wheelchair. We've got a picture of Terry actually bending down, reaching for this wheel. He's obviously very intense trying to do it. He knows what he's trying to do. Ooh. So we thought we will just try him. Right. Brian Kelly, who also we accidentally found that he could manipulate his own wheelchair. We, we swapped wheelchairs. Come on, be pushed down with your hand. Push forward. Terry! What do you miss, Piggy? You clever boy. He's trying to manoeuvre it round his trunk. Come on. Push down. Push forward. <laughs> He's clever. You didn't know he could do that. Did you? Oh, look. Yeah. Clever boy. Good luck, Terry. Aren't you? Well. <laughs> Where are you going to go now? Come on, sit After 40 years in bed and 10 years on a beanbag, Terry Green takes his first inching steps towards a degree of independence. For decades, the full panoply of the medical profession, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, have trooped through this ward and nobody's had the wit, the initiative or the imagination to give Terry Green this opportunity. This kind of neglect invites a whole new definition of the phrase, mental handicap. <laughs> Two hours later, Terry was back in his own wheelchair, unable to reach the wheels. And today, four months later, Terry is still awaiting assessment for a new one. As I always say to the staff, treat the patients as you would like to be treated. And yet we're not carrying that out. I often sit and watch them all at night, you know. We have possibly, what, 15 wheelchairs in a row, and they're all sitting there naked. Then I wonder what they think, if they could tell me how they feel. It really upsets me at times, if I stop and think about it. But I've just shut it out of my mind, you know. We have no option. But at the same time, we shouldn't be doing it like that. There's 25 to be balanced. It has to be a quick in and out. And never mind that you're human beings at the moment, you're not. You're just another patient that we've got to get bathed and get into bed. Because the night nurse is coming on at 9 o'clock. You've all got to be clean and washed and in bed. You see, the hospital has always sort of been run for the nurse's convenience, not for the patient. A statement like that has profound implications for the people who live here. For if they cannot make their needs known, 
then they're at the mercy of those in authority over them. If this hospital is run for the staff and not for the patients, then it is not surprising that life for the patients here has been described, even by the hospital management, as an affront to human dignity. Yet the Department of Health have consistently maintained that there will always be a need for these hospitals to accommodate the most disabled people, those who need nursing and medical care and the special facilities of hospital care. One of the consequences of this policy is that most mental handicap hospitals have their children's and their adolescent wards, for yet another generation is growing up in these hospitals. In the following sequences filmed last year, we concentrate on the most severely handicapped of this new generation. Bath time at Greenacres, the children's ward at St Lawrence's. There are three staff on this evening to look after 28 children. Two of the staff have been seconded from other wards and don't even know the children, and the one regular member of staff is a student nurse. Two years ago, a child in this ward choked to death in just such a situation. The overwhelming atmosphere in a ward like this is one of despair, of the inexorable grinding deprivation of these children's lives, fed, bathed and dressed, but nonetheless desperately lonely. A child who lives in a long-stay hospital can expect to receive on average only five minutes mothering attention on the ward every ten hours. By mothering, I mean cuddling, playing with, talking to. At four o'clock, after they've returned from school, these children are fed, bathed, powdered and dressed. Then they're corralled up one end of the playroom while the staff go off to have a cup of tea. The television blares. A blind child sits blankly, locked in a series of self-stimulatory gestures. And two more blind children cling to each other for comfort. It is difficult to understand what the DHSS mean by special facilities. And in a few years' time, this blind child, grasping for contact in an empty room, may well have given up and be sitting nodding in the adolescent ward. In fact, most of these boys have graduated from the hospital's children's ward. The patterns of deprivation and neglect have now hardened into an endless sequence of repetition. Rocking, nodding, teeth grinding, chewing. When we were there in autumn 1980, none of these boys went to school. The government says that mentally handicapped people should leave school at the same age as the rest of us. So these adolescents have little to do. Their education has effectively ceased. The nurses have little time and little training to cope with their needs. The only person we saw trying was a ward domestic who comes every day after she's finished work to spend some time with this boy. As soon as I walked in the door, you smiled, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, give us a smile. Come on, Maya. Come on. 